Hey, it's Will from Learnerator, and in this video I'm going to walk you through the 2013 AP Microeconomics FRQ question number one. This question is related around monopolists, and therefore we are going to be looking at the conditions of marginal revenue equals marginal cost and see how a monopolist operates in the circumstance of understanding perfect price discrimination. And if you want a similar question to this, check out the 2014 AP Micro question number one as well, because there are some uh, many concepts that are also tested in that question that are very similar to this one. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So, in the planning period of this FRQ, we are given the question which states, the graph below illustrates the demand, marginal revenue, marginal cost, and average total cost curve for a profit-maximizing monopolist. So the first thing that you should identify is that there we're being asked about a profit-maximizing monopolist, and therefore, marginal revenue will be set equal to marginal cost. And so as you're thinking about this question, you want to start looking at where marginal revenue equals marginal cost. You want to start thinking about questions like where the monopolist would set their price. You also want to think about the perfect competition situation in which we were in a equilibrium in which P would equal marginal where, where price would equal marginal cost. So these are things that you want to keep in mind. You want to think about, you know, what would a monopolist profit be? Uh, what would the consumer surplus be if the monopolist were to set at profit maximizing quantities? What would the total cost be for the uh, monopolist? And so these are things that you want to think about as you go through the planning period. But let's go ahead and move on to part A and answer the first question. Assume that the profit maximizing monopolist is unregulated. Using the labeling in the graph, identify each of the following. So let's go through these one by one and start thinking about the monopolist situation. Again, we know that marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost, and intuitively this makes sense because a monopolist has market power, and therefore they can set a price higher than P equals MC, which is the equilibrium condition. So let's think about this a little bit. The area, the place in which the marginal revenue equals the marginal cost happens right here. And so this is going to be the, the quantity in which the monopolist would set if it were profit maximizing. So in this case, Q1 is equal to the quantity of output. So that will be the answer to part 1A. And now let's move on to part 2A, the monopolist price. Well, we know that the monopolist has market power, and therefore he will set the price above marginal cost. So you look at where that quantity lies in the relative demand curve, and then drag across and you find P3, which is going to be your answer to part two. Awesome. So now let's move on to part 3A, the profit earned by the monopolist. So we want to think about what happens when the monopolist sets MR equal to MC. Well, we understand that the monopolist then is operating with this sort of trapezoid and we want to break down this trapezoid into its component parts. So, let's first think about the consumer. Well, we know that the consumer has a consumer surplus of this amount because this is the difference between what they're willing to pay and what they actually pay for these other respective consumers. So they're gaining from, this is the amount that the consumers get and gain from the, inter from the interaction. So now let's think about the total cost. Well, we know that the total cost in this case is going to be the point in which we have the quantity times each successive unit, the marginal cost, and that would give us the total cost. So here's the total cost of the monopolist. So pretty much everything under that marginal cost up until the point of where the monopolist is producing. And then finally we have the monopolist profit, which is going to be in that center uh, that center rectangle. So if we go ahead and color that in. Now let's look at what these points are. We have P3, P1, A, and C. So let's go ahead and write that down. It would be P3, P1, A, and C. And that would be the profit earned by the monopolist because this is your total cost this is your consumer surplus, and this is your profit, your monopolist profit. So now let's think about what is the deadweight loss incurred. So here we need to understand what would be the allocatively efficient outcome, which would be price equals marginal costs. 
and then see what the difference is between the monopolist condition and the allocatively efficient condition. So therefore, we look at where price or demand is equal to marginal cost, and that happens at point F. And so we know that everything above this point of the marginal cost is going to be a deadweight loss, because this is an efficiency that is not being gained to the consumer. When the normal consumer, when price equals marginal cost, your consumer surplus would be this entire rectangle this entire rectangle. But as a result of the monopolist taking a profit, the consumer surplus has decreased in the profit maximizing monopolist situation, and therefore you have an incurred deadweight loss, a loss of economic efficiency when we are not allocating efficiently. And therefore, the deadweight loss will be this region right here. So this, it's a little bit hard to see that yellow, but that is the deadweight loss. So let's go ahead and write that down. The deadweight loss is equal to point A, C, F. Awesome. So that is part A. So essentially part A is just asking you to assess the classic monopoly situation. Let's move on to part B now. Okay, so in part B we're asked, now assume that the monopolist can perfectly price discriminate. Using the labeling of the graph, identify each of the following, the quantity produced and the total revenue received by the monopolist. So the key concept being tested here is perfect price discrimination. And as you remember, perfect price discrimination means that the monopolist has the ability to distinguish between buyers. And therefore, the monopolist will charge a different price for every unit consumed. In other words, the monopolist will maximize the possible price that it charges for the consumer. So the first thing we want to think about is that perfect equilibrium in which price equals marginal cost, because that's going to give us the maximum possible consumer surplus when we're in an equilibrium condition. And as we previously mentioned in the last part of the question, that would be this entire rectangle. This is the amount of consumer surplus that's gained from the situation in which price is equal to marginal cost. And what we also know is that in perfect price competition, what's going to happen is the monopolist will be able to seize this entire rectangle. And therefore, the quantity produced is actually just going to be equal to the equilibrium quantity situation in which we have Q3 as the quantity produced. And again, that intuition is the monopolist has the ability to distinguish between every single buyer, and therefore he will charge up to the point in which price equals marginal cost. So now let's think about what is the total revenue received by the monopolist. Now this is a, a sub-question that you can you know, kind of get tripped up on. And the reason why is because you are usually you know, asked about the total profit or uh, about the profit earned by the monopolist. And you can easily confuse this question as potentially just that triangle. Um, however, it's asking about the total revenue, which means what the entirety of the monopolist in terms of every single unit that it sells. So in this case, we want to look at this entire trapezoid, because the trapezoid is going to denote all of the revenue that the monopolist receives as a result of pricing at this point. And therefore, we're looking at this trapezoid rather than just above just than just the triangle above marginal cost. Remember, this total revenue function is going to be this entire trapezoid. Um, and the reason why is because, again, we're not being asked about you know, profit earned by the monopolist like we were in Part A. We're asked about total revenue. And therefore, the total revenue is going to be this trapezoid, which is denoted by P4, O, Q3, and F. And that is it for Part B. So let's go ahead and move on to Part C. In Part C, we're asked, instead, assume the monopolist charges a single price and is regulated to produce the socially efficient quantity. Using the labeling of the graph, identify the socially efficient quantity and the consumer surplus at the socially efficient quantity. So the great part about this question is that we've actually already done it through the analysis of the previous parts. We know that price would equal marginal cost in the socially efficient allocation, and therefore we have Q3 as the socially efficient quantity, and then we have um, the consumer surplus being again 
that triangle above the marginal cost. So that is P4, P1, and F. Pretty simple. So this just goes to show you that as you're solving this question and thinking about how this graph relates to other market situations, you can really start solving the entire question at once. And that's how economics should be. It should be very intuitive in understanding uh, the different concepts and how they interrelate with one another. So now let's move on to Part D. In Part D, we're asked, is the monopolist facing the regulation in Part C earning a positive profit, earning zero economic profit, or incurring a loss? Well, so what we know is that in this case, we are going to incur a zero profit. And the reason why is because we know that price is being set equal to the marginal cost when the monopolist is facing regulation. And therefore, as a result of this, we have a situation in which we are charging up to the point where price equals marginal cost, and therefore there is zero profit being made, because if you think about the profit function of P minus MC times quantity, this is just going to be zero times Q, which is zero profit. And therefore, the monopolist is, is generating zero profit. And the explanation that you would say is, because we're setting P equals to MC from the profit equation, we understand that the monopolist is generating zero profit as a result. Um, so again, it goes back to the core concept of monopoly in which marginal revenue would be equal to marginal cost for a profit maximizing monopolist. But because the monopolist is regulated, he is forced to set price equal to marginal cost and therefore generate zero profit, just like the perfect equilibrium situation. So now let's move on to part E. In part E, we're asked, is point F in the elastic, inelastic, or unit elastic portion of the demand curve? So as we know from the past, we know that we need to assess the marginal revenue curve in this case, and we need to think about if point F is at a point in which it is positive, negative, or zero. In the case in which it's positive, it would be elastic. If it's zero, it would be unit elastic, or unit elastic. And then negative, inelastic. So let's look at where the marginal revenue is at this point F. Well, we know that the marginal revenue curve is downward sloping, and as you can see here from this part of the marginal revenue line, you see that it's below zero. And therefore, if you were to extend this line down, you see that marginal revenue is negative, and therefore, it's inelastic at point F. And that's pretty much it. So that's part E, and that is all of part of question number one for the 2013 AP Micro FRQ. So as always, if you need additional practice, feel free to check out LearnRater for hundreds of AP Microeconomics practice questions. We have it all, including video explanations and detailed written explanations. So check us out. All of our easy and medium questions are free, and I'll see you guys next time.